Welcome to Torque Life, the show where we travel around the back roads of America searching for extraordinary stories from ordinary people just like you. We look for torqued up rides, jacked up rides. I love this Jeep Rubicon. It has a six liter Hemi. This thing is perfect for going off road at Moab. Look at this. We've got a 72 Corvette Stingray convertible with an incredible story behind it. But this, <laughs> a 67 Corvette with the 327 tri-power motor in it. This thing is my all-time favorite car. These are some of the incredible rides you're gonna see on Torque Life. On this episode of Torque Life, we meet a couple whose love for NASCAR leads them to victory when they win a 650 horsepower Richard Petty race car. Then we meet a realtor who spends his free time serving terminally ill children, only to find out his own life is being cut short. So he finally decides to finish restoring that 1965 Mustang he dreamed about since he was a teenager. And we put you in the driver's seat of a Bentley on some windy country roads to see what it's made of. And finally we follow a race car driver continuing the family tradition of over 40 years as he prepares for his final race of the season. As we follow this along, unfortunately he crashes his car with just six laps to go on that race. So buckle up and come along for the ride on this episode of Torque Life. About a year and a half ago, my wife told me about this incredible online sweepstakes at Win the King's Car. So I had to enter 10 times online. That was the max amount. And I went in and entered. And then about three months later, I got this email that said, you're one of 14 finalists. Oh my gosh. And it was a trip to Miami down to the Homestead race. But we got to go to Miami for a weekend and uh, stay on the beach, and that was an incredible win oh, itself. I nice. bet, I bet. But then they took us, and uh, we had an escort down to the Homestead race in buses. We were escorted down. And uh, at the, the race, what they did is there were 14 finalists around the country, and we all got in, and picked a number out of a hat. And each number, I didn't know, but it corresponded to a key that they had mm -hmm. made up. And they lined us up one through 14. I had key number nine. One through eight went up and tried to start the car, and no luck. Number nine. You got it. bus ride down, I told my wife I'm going to win this car today because it was my birthday. That's right, it was your birthday. <laughs> and you knew it, you had that it. thing in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so as I turned in, it cranked, unbelievable experience. I like how this sounds. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> At first I cranked it in and it just roared. And then, and then everyone's saying, rev it up, rev it up. <laughs> now, when I first heard you, you know, turn the key in, in your garage and heard that electric fuel pump, did you hear that before you heard the roar or did you just... You... No, because they had it set up. So it was already set up for us just to, to turn the key. Uh -oh. The only reason that I do the fuel pump is to make sure I've got gas going to... Oh, I, I see. Okay, 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 okay. They had already primed it ahead of time. Oh. And so as soon as you turn the key, boom. hard right up. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> they didn't even have a question. When you did that, did you forget? Didn't you forget to flip the switch and it wasn't doing something? Or am I wrong in my thinking? No, okay, you, you were thing? you were wondering why it took me so long. Uh, the seat. They had the seat pulled up, and I wanted to <laughs> sit in the car. I wasn't just going to go in and try <laughs> from outside. I had to get my knees under. Oh, that's right. Because right, everyone else just kind of half sat in the car. 
and Dan's like, I'm gonna own it, and I think is what he told me. So he said, I'm getting in, like, I own this car. There was a debate going on. It's all We were sitting there talking to different people from around the, you know, the US, and we were kind of talking about and just listening to what they were saying, and they, they were all debating. They'd all already hashed this out. Well, we seriously, up until I think a, like a few, like a week before this, didn't know that there was a cash option with the car. We thought the car was kind of going to be this beater. <laughs> you were saying right? that, we yeah. Thought the car was valued really low, and I'm thinking, eh, it's a beater car. Why, why would we give it up? I mean, why do we want $3,500 for a car? And um, so, yeah, so they were all debating it. We, we started talking and thinking, and when we learned all this, we thought, uh-uh, we're not giving up this car. This is a piece of history. <laughs> yeah. And we want to show it and have fun with it. And seriously, that was our first experience with cars. And it, it, it's an incredible one. We oh, have a, a, I bet. A fantastic time. I said, there's not a better Saturday than going to a car show and sitting and talking about the car with people. It, there really isn't. <laughs> I, it was coming up to the 50th anniversary of, of um, Richard Petty's winning a season in his 67 Belvedere. The original sits in his museum in North Carolina, where I think he was born, raised, and has never left. And that's right. where he <laughs> has his Petty Motorsports and, uh, and his Petty Garage. And I guess that uh, Smithfield is one of the sponsors, and I'm thinking they still are. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And so they came in and with Richard commissioned this to be done, to be given away, but to spend the whole season, you know, driving around and talking about the Kings, you know, winning a season, which I don't think anybody's ever broken the, the record. 27 mm -hmm. races, one season with one car, and 10 races in a row. Wow. Winning 10 races, 10, 10, 10 wins in a row. Wow. wow. He's never surpassed, no one surpassed it. Man, I love the story about the Petty car. Dan and Robin were such an amazing couple, and they were so excited to share their story with us. Our next story is a sobering one about a man whose obsession with cars goes far beyond racing. While most of us spend our time watching TV or checking social media, the guy in our next story spends his time traveling across the state, meeting with terminally ill children, and then taking them out for the adventure of a lifetime just to leave pain and worry behind, even if it's just for a few hours. Then he gets a devastating phone call that changes life forever. His life was being cut short, there was nothing he could do about it. So he decided he threw caution to the wind, decided to rebuild that car he'd been dreaming about since he was a teenager. So this was a car that I had a dream about 16 sitting in a parking lot. She's now purple with a 347 stroker and she's known as cop bait. Oh my. Yeah, you gotta see her, you'll love her. I can't wait. It's gonna be fun. All right. Man, I love it when you fire that thing up. It's got a nice roar, dude. I love it. Oh my God. Makes you grin every time. Right? Do you ever get all tired of it? No way. I love it. It's awesome. What life's all about. Yeah. Cop bait has a long story. So when I was 16 years old, we grew up in the Midwest. We didn't exactly have money. Dad was a factory worker, you know, Grandpa was a still worker. And when I was 16 years old, my father surprised me with a Mustang. And it was an old eighth mile Mustang. 
that a kid at 16 years old probably shouldn't have. Uh, it was fun, it was loud, it was fast, and it was mean looking. Time goes along. Uh, last year I do a lot of charity work. I'm a Santa for homeless kids and kids that are sick. I myself got really, really sick got prostitis. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of what all happened to me, but I thought maybe I only had three or four months left to live. I have a lot of cars. One of the cars that I, I pulled out a few years before this was an old 65 Mustang that was sitting on the side of the house. Uh, so after one of my doctor's visits from the hospital, I was expecting the worst news imaginable. I said, I'm going to build that dream. So I'll tell you, so when cop bait was finally getting done, it was actually right here in this garage. And she was sitting right here. And you gotta remember before she had the little 289 in her, you know, mufflers and all this other stuff. We dropped in that 347 stroker. I got the long tube headers that I shouldn't have bought, but who cares, right? You're building your car that you want, you get what you want. The first time it hit, I thought I was gonna pass out. It scared me. I loved it. And it's like, holy cow, am I going to be able to control this thing? It sounds like a beast. Well, then they tell me, well, it's coming straight out of the long tube headers. We don't have mufflers on it. So I'm like, okay, we go put mufflers on. I was like, you know what? I want that same feeling, that same adrenaline rush that when it comes up. So I went in, put the, the smallest flow master I could put on there. Still good sound. I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put some dumps on here. So I'm just going to drive around with the dumps open. Then I'm sitting there, I was like, you know what? I think the dumps are still hindering the sound a little bit. So I crawled underneath there, took off the dumps. The exhaust is still on the back, so if someone pulls me over, I'd be like, sir, I have mufflers on there. I don't know what you're talking about. But for me, I want that sound. When I get in there and you start it up and it scares you, that's what you want. If you can get into your car right now and it don't scare you, it's not done being built. So I'm the high school dropout that the parents don't want their children to know about. School to me was boring. 17 years old, I drop out, <clears throat> go get my real estate license. By the time I'm 21 years old, I have one of the largest independent companies in the state of Utah. And what that freedom does, and even though it's hard, I got 40 brokers that work for me, three locations in two states, it gives me the freedom to go meet these kids that are having horrible issues from cancer to, uh, I had one this morning that just had his uh, legs cut off uh, from a disease that he has. And I go out, I meet these kids, and they all ask about cop bait or one of my other cars. And these kids forget all their illness, all their sickness, the second they hear that car start up, they start laughing, they start giggling, and they just wanna go faster. It's freedom. That is what it means to them. They are no longer stuck in a wheelchair. They are no longer that kid that, oh, you're sick, let me take care of you. Just like when I was 14, 15, 16 years old on Nolan Road in Missouri, I wasn't the poor kid. I was the kid with the hot rod. And this kid here, he's no longer the nine-year-old with cancer. He's the kid that's cruising down cop bait on State Street at 90 miles an hour. That is what it means to them. They forget. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's forgetting that you're sick and it's not just the children, it's the families. Because now dad is sitting there seeing his son burn you know, a, a 60 foot mark across Maverick's parking lot. Now dad's remembering what it was like when he was 15, 16 years old. And he no longer can have that stuff because he's taking care of a, a sick child. You know, so that is what these cars mean to these children. It's a way to forget all problems, all sickness, all disease. We all have our favorite cars, and one of Bryce's favorites is Bentleys. So Bryce takes the Bentley through the paces. Do you think he'll love it as much as he thought he would? Find out next on Torque Life. We're up at Immigration Summit while Brian is out, I don't know, he's being a goofball, being his natural self, whatever he's doing. But anyways, more importantly, we are out cruising in this beautiful Bentley. Oh my gosh, we could not ask for a better car to be doing this drive in. It is such a beautiful drive. a 
2005 Bentley Continental GT. It's got the W16, 500, depending on which article you read, it's 551 horse or 552 horse, but either way, twin turbo, W16, I don't know, it's, this car has an incredible sound to it. And, and I love listening to the way cars sound. And so we fired this up on a cold star and yeah, it, it sounded cool. And then when you put your foot in it, there's not a lot of noise from the engine because of the way these Bentleys are made, they're, they're just quiet. Seeing how this car just cruises and flies around corners. And when those turbos spool up, wow. The, the steering in this, I, I, I love it. I mean, it's not like driving a Corvette or a Porsche, not that kind of steering. I mean, it's even different than my CTS-V. The, fir the very first time I got into a race car, it, just thinking about it chokes me up, um, the world stopped. Honestly, the world stopped. Everything really does slow down. I mean, I mean, at 100 miles an hour, you don't. It doesn't sound that fast, but in that short of an area, and when you're next to people, and you've got tires that stick out wide open, if you mess up and you touch a tire with one of these guys, yeah, you're going to die. I'm out here at Rocky Mountain Raceway. I'm here with Robbie Crowther. It's race day. And I heard there's some drama going on with the car. Well, with the car itself, we're doing okay. Last night, we had to stay up till about two o'clock in the morning. And I actually ended up spending the night here in the back of my truck with my wife, just because we were late and tired. I had to tear the top of the motor off and seal a couple leaks. And, and uh, we had a few issues. The car rang beautifully yesterday. Um, it, uh, everything's going pretty smooth there. There is some drama going on at the racetrack because of tire issues and whatnot, but it's okay. it's it's just part of racing. All right. So. And are you ready to race today then? Or? I'm, I'm actually not going to race today. Okay. I'm, I'm actually going to step down and let Mel Anders drive. His, uh, I'm, I'm the motor builder for his as well. Okay. Me and my wife are. And he's having some issues. Um, and kind of to put this funny, he's getting kind of old, doesn't have many years. <laughs> and I've got many years of racing in front of me. and. And there's a, there's a lot of big things going on tonight, and I'd rather see the car do good. And Mel's great behind the wheel. I trust him fully. Um, even if something does happen, I know it's not his fault. But uh, it's, it's going to be a great night. Mel's a good driver. Well, we're here with Mel. Mel, you're a friend of Robbie's. You've been yeah. racing with him for a while? Yeah, I raced with his dad, raced with him. Yeah. Great. Good friends. And, and Robbie's told us a little bit about what's going on today. I guess you're going to race the car today. Yeah, he's uh, he's put a lot of work into it. Yeah. And my hot rod's having a lot of motor trouble, and he just wants to go out and do good. And he's he's offered me a ride, and I'm happy to drive his hot rod. He, he knows what he's doing out there. I'm sorry to hear your car's not doing that great today. I'm sure that's disappointing. Sure. But at the same time, you've got a great friend, Robbie. He's going to let oh, you yeah. try to go out and win it for you. So. Well, most racers are all that way you know sprint car guys are all yeah like, uh, this guy over here broke a front axle and needed a hub my guys went home and grabbed a bunch of calipers and stuff to help him get put back together that's really cool and that's just the way everybody is and robbie he's he's like you know this is his second year i think running right he's like just jump in it now see how it feels yeah and it's a pretty good little hot rod so i was excited to do it so you're a local guy too you're you're here in salt lake area been here my whole life okay well cool we're excited
Bobby, what I was surprised about though is when I saw this getting off the tow truck here, you got a smile on your face. You know, it's 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 just part of racing. Um, it's something we all do. Honestly, the, the smile on my face is what Mel was able to experience tonight. He's had a big frown for quite some time and he hasn't been able to run and run hard. And he got to do that tonight and it makes me feel good to see that. Oh, yeah. even, yep. though, even though we twerp stuff, it's, it is what it is. So. Things didn't go exactly as you hoped. <laughs> yeah. Let's say that, but... <laughs> Yes, yes. Did you have a good time tonight, oh, though? I haven't had a sweet little motor like that for like five years. All right. And that thing just, it, I had other drivers come up and go, what is that thing? <laughs> What's in that? Yep. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Torque Life. On the next episode, you'll see a lot more torqued up rides. We'll meet a couple who brought a Chevelle back from the grave. And oh man, this one's got a whole lot of torque. The Coons, they wanted to build a hot rod. He had his eye on a specific ride, but oh, she had a whole nother idea. I seen that one over in the corner with dust on it, and I says, oh, look at that. And so we went and looked at it, and I had to have it. Join us next time on Torque Life.